This is an orchestral sample library. It's from Spitfire, or Cine Samples, or Orchestral Tools, or some such, I forget which. But it really is very good. It also really is very expensive. This is a picture of the car I had to sell to buy my orchestral sample library, but that's okay. Because this is a picture of the composer I will sound exactly like, now that I have my sample library, so that's cool. Now this is another orchestral sample library, the one I bought to replace that first one. It's from Stresoff or Sample Modeling or VSL, I forget which, but it really is very good. And of course it was also very expensive, but I had to buy it because it turns out my compositions with that first sample library didn't actually sound like this composer after all, but more like this one. Which means there must be something wrong with the first sample library. In fact, just quietly, while I've got you here talking about that old sample library, I read on a forum somewhere that the legato samples in that library don't have enough round-robin crossfades or something. I'm not really sure what they meant, but whatever. The product was definitely missing something. It was compromising my art, and I'm serious about composing, so I bought a better one. And at the Black Friday sales, by the way, I'm going to buy another better one because I'm a composer on a budget, and I need to save money. And when the brand new one comes out next year, you know the one that they're working on right now but it's not finished yet? I'm going to buy that too because I'm a composer who's serious about quality. And when the expansion pack for that inevitably comes out, I'll get that as well because I might be a composer, but I'm also a completionist and there's no point in only having half a thing. And it's not just strings. I've got brass and woodwinds and percussion, other things to research, to read reviews, to listen to demos. And it's all very time consuming, but I know it'll be worth it. And just as soon as my collection is complete, then, then, I'm going to do some serious composing. Okay, let's back up a little bit. My name's Philip Johnston, I'm a music education writer and composer, and like many others watching this video, the slightly embarrassed owner of more orchestral sample libraries than any human being could ever use. Now, part of the problem is, I love these libraries. I love getting messages in my inbox from the likes of Spitfire or VSL with what's new this week. But there's a reality check here which I have to remember, or I'll never get anything done. Ultimately, sample libraries are just ingredients. And simply having these ingredients doesn't make me compose like a professional any more than simply having food ingredients will make me cook like a chef. Now what can help me cook like a chef is a recipe. Because it'll tell me, out of these ingredients you have, go get these three, combine them in this way, you'll get this result. Which got me thinking. Musicians can share every note of a symphony with sheet music. We can share chord progressions with chord charts, but to my knowledge, there's no easy way to share the millions of effective instrumental combinations out there. In other words, there's no such thing as an orchestration recipe. I'm making this video because I think there should be. Now the whole point of an orchestration recipe is that this isn't sheet music or chord charts. It has nothing to say about which notes to write or which harmonies and progressions to use. That's completely up to you. What it will say is, look, here's a list of ingredients, the instruments you need. Go load up these ingredients from whatever sample libraries you happen to have, it doesn't matter. And then follow these steps and you'll end up with this orchestral sound. Which means, if you like that orchestral sound, you now know how to get there. And suddenly, the sample libraries you have are filled with possibilities. Let's look at an example using the instruments here. We'll, we'll start with low strings, and because it's a recipe, it doesn't matter which strings, just load up whatever you've got. Okay, so what do the instructions say? Pulsing eighth notes mirrored across three octaves, staccato. Let's set up cycle record, follow the four steps, and see where this recipe takes us. Now violin two, syncopated, filling harmonies. Above this, two oboes, legato. Now violin one, marcato. Now whether you actually happen to like this particular recipe or not is not the point. You can always choose different recipes and there's no end of them. But what I want you to notice though, 
is that if you follow the steps in any particular recipe, even if you use different melodies and harmonies each time, you will still get that recipe signature sound. That's the whole point of recipes. So here's the same recipe again, with completely different notes this time, but it's unmistakably the same sound, which means you can now summon that sound whenever you need it. What I'm really hoping is that composers will make their own recipes available so that we can buy recipe collections the same way we buy sample libraries. Only, you know, not so expensive, please. Now, I've started the ball rolling and have set up orchestrationrecipes.com for my own recipes. Go there, take a look, spend 30 bucks and buy the collection if you like. But better still, go make your own. Charge 30 bucks for a collection, sell them at your website or wherever. I'll check them out, and I won't be the only one who does. We all need this. I'll finish now with one more recipe example from me. You can go to the website for how to build it. But my whole argument is that for any composer, it's not about how many sample libraries you have. It's how many recipes you know that makes the difference. What would happen if we started sharing them? Beatles, Beatles.